let's take this morning. So this morning you had Chris Simpson, England, played for England. Patrick Rooney, the best 21, 22 year old in the country, just won the Madeira Open. Great bloke, great prospect. Sam Todd, the best 16 year old in the world, and a club player. Right, but he's competent, but he's a club player, but there's no problem in working with them. That's how we work as well. We don't have to be top players with top players. So who does Nick Matthew practice with? Who does Jan Rint? Anybody apparently when they were good, nobody practiced with. Rubbish. If I put James or Lee on with Layla or with a young kid, I would say just warm up with Layla. They wouldn't even look at me. They'd go straight on and do it. Life and progression is about giving and taking, isn't it? So when Lee and James were young, they no doubt were on court with older, better players, or not better in ultimate, but with quality players who were older, no problem with that. And so in their turn, and if I, if I had Layla and James tonight, or some, some other players for a session, that would be fine. Layla can hit the ball as well as he can. She can feed. She, so within per boundaries, like putting him under certain conditions, perfectly valid and she could feed him anything you like. So what's the problem? I remember when I was eight, nine years old I and mean, I hadn't been playing that long really, only a year or two, a couple of years maybe. And he was coaching Gwaine Bryce at the time who was world number four, uh, you know, 25 years of age. And he had me doing straight drop and drive with him because he knew that I could put a straight drop in to the front and it was still valid for, for Gwaine. Uh, it wasn't an open play thing, but one, one of Malcolm's uh, big things is that he'll, it's to balance you out as, a, as a, an individual as well. So when I was training for the World Junior Championships, he had me on with Lee Beach, who was 12 years of age, and um, he'd restrict me in a way that he made it, he made it valid. So I, I would have to hit above the line only or behind the line or something, some restriction that handicapped it to make, to make it quite level. And someone like Lee was able to then, cause it, it wasn't about pace. So uh, against conditions, uh, I often have a situation where one player can do anything, yeah. And, and a lot of my work is based on conditions. So if I've got James and I've got, say, some of those players this morning, obviously he could beat them all 3 nil, but they're good enough to practice with him in every sense. But I might say to him, right, James, you serve, you can play straight only. They can play any shot. So that brings them together without a doubt. Or I can put him on the. I can make him play above or deeper, and they play normally. And he's under pressure because they're, they're quality players anyway. But then this morning, that's what I did. For instance, in um, they did a practices, some practices, and then uh, they played. What I often do so that one player will play straight only, the other play normally, and every rally they alternate that. So they alternate then angles and cross courts, any shot alternating and below the line or shorter, alternating. So when you get players of like ability, I alternate them every rally. So they're having to adapt all the time as well. And you know, all, all those things are a part of this working together and helping lesser or younger or whatever it is. That's how the whole system operates on that basis. And I make the practices so that they're valid. And you don't hear Chris, who's an international player, complaining he's on with Dominic or saying that the practice is not valid, because it is valid, I know it is. And he knows it is as well. But I'll say, lead with the left foot into the front right, for instance, I teach that, leading off the front foot, because it then gives them a better balance, they're leaning in, rather than off the back foot where they're leaning back, which is obviously not good. So I'm teaching that, and in a match, you may not always be able to do that. You come under pressure, you'll be forced back, go off the back foot, I accept that. But if I inbuilt the principle of leading off the front feet, but I'm giving them those foundations all the time. Saurav Gosal was a top Indian player, who was with me for eight years. You know, when he goes into the front right, I know his feet are gonna be dead right. But that's because he came here and I told him for that eight years or whatever. I'm forever talking that sort of language. <music> Elliot Ridge is another one, he's a good England under 19 player. What a lovely career, he loves coaching. So what, I do, what we do at the moment, we we'll think so-and-so might be good. I call them upstairs. Are you interested in coaching? Well, James admitted that when he was working in wherever it was recently, he was saying things I said. He, he was re reluctant to admit it, but he was saying he was, <laughs> he was laughing when he was saying it. So I don't know. Um, I think what I hope happens is that they pick up 
the base here again, and then they add their own personalities, dimensions, add their own practice, think of their own things, but you want them to be themselves, like I want the players to be themselves, not clones, not cardboard things that I've sort of created. I want them to be people express themselves.